I like that a little bit better. Here's Chuck Norris. Nice. It's five Doom. Retry. Oh, I better change the uh, episode, huh? Um, let me go back to Twitch to see if that's... We are at episode 44. Well, let's call this one. Are we live or are we not? Yeah, we are live. Crap. Never mind. Uh, if we weren't live, I'd totally tell you an inappropriate title. Well, it's we not inappropriate. It's nice car shorts. It's called Rampike. Oh, that's cool. If I scroll down, it becomes a tiny window. <laughs> You're a tiny window. Okay, that's actually... You froze up on me. There you go. If I move this a little bit, that should fix it, but I don't see myself. Yeah, I fixed it. Perfect. Makes me look like a fat, lazy guy. I am a fat, lazy guy. Alright. So. Sounds like we've got sound there. Boom. HTML5 player, mini players on. Mm, report playback issues. Twitter.com. 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 You will tweet. You have shrunk. Yeah, a little bit. Joke is so tiny. You can move my screen up and make yours bigger. No, because then I cut off my name. Oh. Your name's not on there anymore either. I yeah, it is. It's just one word. Like Madonna. Ben. Oh, for I that. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean. Yeah. Well, that's because you don't like me and Matt, so you just take all the glory. No, it's not that at all. Don't lie. Um, no, when, when you guys have, uh, when you're alternating back and forth between, uh, windows on, on s Skype, it shows your name underneath. When it's just one uh, call, the one call, it doesn't show, uh, the name. Well, so, you don't know who I am, so. Well, they do now, because I, I fix No! It. People need to learn who you are. No. So that way they can say, you, you can tell them, it's like, what's my name? And they'll be like, I, I don't know, as they wet themselves. I think I'm going to use the pen name Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes? Yep. I can see that. <laughs> Just find a name in public domain. Frankenstein? That's not taken. Let's see. Uh, I just tweeted What's that. another one? Picture of Dorian Gray, so it'll be Dorian Frankenstein. It's fine. We can use it. Let's go. All right. We're going. We're, we're going, going live. Go, Ready? go, go, Twitch. Oh, I gotta get technical setup off the screen here. The writer's journey has many paths and starts with a single blank page. How will you? How will your journey begin? What path will you take? How will you fill your page? This is the show that's better than that movie where Lex Luthor dumps Spider-Man for NSYNC and pisses off the Lone Ranger. Live from Lincoln, it's Word Art Online. <coughs> okay, I tried something new. Uh, welcome to I Word liked it. <laughs> welcome to Word Art Online, uh, Writers Hangout, episode 43, entitled Rampike. So titled because that is the today's word of the day. That's right, folks. You have stumbled upon Word Art Online, a writer's hangout. Uh, every Tuesday, starting at 9 p.m. Central, we gather together to talk writing, encourage each other, encourage each other in our own writing endeavors, and if possible, er encourage and entertain those of you who are gracious enough to give us just a little bit of, our, of your time. 
Uh, we post the previous shows to our website at www.wowcast.com. That's W-A-O-C-A-S-T dot com. Uh, and we, big thanks for checking us out. Uh, you can also go to our about page and read about us yep. and see our pretty faces. Yep. And speaking of introducing ourselves, Ben, why don't you, uh, who, who are you, Ben? Well, this time I'm actually going to read this off the Wowcast site instead of my Twitter. So I'm a master of silly putty, and in an age ago, in the infantile stages of personal computer, there was born a baby who would who would shake the world and create one of the biggest empires known to man. His name is Mark Zuckerberg. However, two, ladies, two years after Mark's birth came Ben Weiss. Ben was also gifted with computers and had a high IQ and an, had an I uh, had an IQ higher than DC's Ray Palmer. Using his brains, Ben has achieved nothing of great note. Reading over 500 novels, Ben has written 1.5 of his own and has published none. He has seen over 3,000 movies, owns over a thousand. And has a vo- and has been a voice actor in two independent films. He stars as a host in three different podcasts: Underground Inc. The, well, I no longer star on the Epic Log podcast. This needs to be updated. The word and Word Art Online. I'm not saying Ben is Batman, but I will say Ben and Batman have never been seen in a room together. Coincidence? Ben is a two-time participant in National Novel Writing Month and a one-time winner. He is also a five-time Academy Award channel changer and a six-time Oscar viewer. He has, it has been said that he is more ripped than Hugh Jackman and has been nominated as Sexiest Man Alive for nine year, straight years. It's never been confirmed, just said. It could be said that he is the greatest writer in the world. It has never been said, but it could be. With all this said or not said about Ben... There is one thing we know, and that is he is not—he has not run out of words yet. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess uh, one of us could read for Matt. Uh, Matthew Nordine is one of our Matthew E. Nordine is uh, our one of our other hosts. He is busy with other pri- with prior engagements um, as part of the Avangard Improv, which is an improv troupe that he's a part of. Uh, from his about the about section in the uh, Word Art Online site, a speculative fiction author who discovered the power of books while attending a one-room schoolhouse near Gothenburg, Nebraska. Once immersed into the ta- troves of town school in junior high, he stumbled upon poetry. This rash never re- recovered as it spread over 100 sappy lyrics and sonnets throughout high school. Once released into college, they were burned and replaced by a new series of sy- syllabic poetry that rang with elegance and truth. These can be found in his books, book, Musings of the Northern Poet. Yet, the poet was only a gateway into the broader world of writing. Or, excuse me, the poetry was only a gateway into the broader world of writing. He soon tripped into the grove of speculative fiction, where he is creating a series of fantasy stories, these branched off into re- into the realms of science fiction and horror that wait to bloom. His flash flash fiction story, XR four hundred four, is available now on Kindle, while the others can be will be emerging soon. More is divulged on his personal website, which holds the secrets of his Renaissance performances with his and adventures with his wife. Uh, Go to for the links to that. Go to the wowcast.com site, and you can find your way through. <clears throat> now for my intro. <laughs> Yours is Joe did not actually stay up to specs when we defined the word number or the word count. I break rules. And he went too long. I'm a ro- I'm a rogue. <laughs> there was a man from Gothenburg whose name was screamed from the lips of women everywhere. He was a ladies' man, a lover. A knight in shiny Joe? armor. What? You were cutting out there. Okay. I don't know if you were cutting out on the t- stream, but I did not hear you for a while. Okay. I. I only got the one thing, and I'm still reading the mic. 
Okay. Okay. Start again. There, once, there was movie. a man from Gothenburg whose name was screamed from the lips of women everywhere. He was a ladies' man, a lover, a knight in shining armor. That wasn't Joe, for Joe was not some suave, simple donkey in a tiny metal can. Joe was not famous, not one of the cool kids. Joe was simply Joe. A shy, sexy, beardless, extremely creative guy, lost in his own imagination, telling stories in his head. Joe always found a ways found ways to entertain himself through writing stories and playing video games. Joe discovered early on that writing and video games helped him to cope with depression and life's challenges. Like a rogue with a set of masterwork thieves tools trying to work tumbler after tumbler, tumbler on a lock to get to the treasure, this was how the words on a page were to Joe, a means to explore his own imagination while helping to cope with everything else. Not to say that Joe's childhood was bad, it was rather fantastic, but sometimes the dragons we face, <coughs> depression and anxiety, shows themselves through many faces. Joe continued to struggle with depression and finding balance with writing throughout college and into his current life. To this day, Joe still isn't famous. He is loved by friends and family far more than he understands why. He, lo he still loves writing. He also enjoys podcasting, playing tabletop video games, live orchestra music, and mostly, most importantly, spending time with his son. Joe is a single father, uh, aspiring get writer, game designer, and software tester by day. Uh, current projects, current freelance project is writer on Elf Elfwood, a seafaring campaign setting from Harsh Realities. Uh, he enjoys every aspect of writing storytelling and gaming. Joe hopes that one day his creative talents will be used to develop games both digital and tabletop, providing for his family and making himself proud of the life he is forging through the storms that life brings. It's a little cool. long-winded. That probably needs to be shorted, shortened up. A little yeah. Bit, but. That's why we were sticking. We were like 150 words, Joe, and I looked at yours and I was like, mine was exactly 150 words. Matt was a little bit less, and I was like, Joe is gone on to 300. <laughs> I like 300. 300 is a good word. Yeah. Or a good word count. All right, where is my list? There it is. Uh, okay, so as we as we talked, uh, more about Ben, Matt, and Joe can be found on our website, wowcast.com, W A O C A S T.com. You can find links to past, episode, past episodes, a couple of rantings. Eventually, you'll be able to find some of our works up there as well. I believe this, we have a store page um, for we where do. you can find yep. our, our books and stuff, links to it. So, Which really right now it is, uh, let's see, if I go to the store, we have Matt with two different things you can get. You can get uh, Musing of the Northern Poet. Or his XR404. Me, you can get an unedited version of my poetry book. And Joe, you can buy a Harsh Mode Monday adventure that he wrote. Uh, it was a character uh, one shot, but yeah. Yep. yep. You will also find a link for more Harsh Reality stuff, as well as you can click on the websites of each one of us. I haven't updated my website in a while. Yep, and Elfwood will be up there eventually, um, as soon as we get it done. So, all right, so uh, we're knee deep into Nano Camp Nano Rimo, as you can see on our our screen here. We have updated the word count. Uh, ben is currently at five thousand two hundred eighty-eight words. I am at four forty-three thousand two hundred twenty-four words, which is pretty impressive for me. Um, I'm hoping to hit the the 5K mark this year, and I've got till Monday to do it or Saturday, Sunday to do it. Yeah, Matt's, I'm not. I'm not doing so hot. <laughs> Matt's uh, a little behind on his word count, uh, 39,741, and then uh, you're cutting out again, Joe. Oh, okay. Am I back? Is it? Yeah, you're back. Is it your internet or my internet? I don't know because I'm I'm showing full uh, full mic here, so I don't know. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, so I, I I don't know if it's I mean I'm showing full everything too, so I don't know what's going on. Uh, the uh, let's see, and then Asia is showing uh, fifteen thousand one hundred seventy-four. 
um, words. So. Uh, and so who's ahead is me with golf score. Yeah, we'll go with that one. <laughs> um, the, what For those of you that aren't, aren't familiar, Camp NaNoWriMo is a kind of a set-your-own-goal um, daily word count or monthly word count goal um, that, that you can – you set your own goal and then – challenge yourself to write every day um i set mine pretty shy for just ten thousand. i just wanted to write ten thousand words because i wasn't sure what was coming and what was happening and uh you know i, I really i like i said i just genuinely wasn't sure what was happening and uh so i did that, and I've been averaging about 1,500 to 2,000 words a day, and I'm still going strong. Kind of makes me very hopeful for being able to knock out uh, NaNoWriMo this year. Um, yeah, the NaNoWriMo better. is the National Novel Writing Month, which happens in in November. And this year we all better win. Yeah, that challenge is uh, 50,000 words in 30 days. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. I'm hoping that certain current uh, struggles are done so I don't have those distractions. Um, I'm hoping that I get you know some free time to, to be able to just sit and focus on one project. Because um, right now, the I'd like to say the 43,000 words were all on one project, but honestly it's been divided between two, pro two or three projects. Um, that I'm trying to get done and, and ready to go. Uh, so it's pretty exciting. Uh, ben, why did you get into why did you get into nano to begin with? Because I can. Uh, it was because Joe brought it up one time, and I was like, "Well, I've always wanted to write a novel. Let's do this," and I did. Uh, the cool thing is, is now if you go to NaNoWriMo's site, just their site. Okay, let's say you don't want to do camp, but you still want to set a goal and try to meet it. Uh, you can actually go to their site, and under my and after you sign in under my NaNoWriMo, you will find goal trackers. So you can every month if you want, you could do uh, a goal. See, and it's very important that you guys that that you you set those little. Oh, you don't even have to do a month. You can assign it to be a day or mo several months or whatever. And sometimes that that daily goal, you know, is is what you need for that little bit of success. Um, something that I've been struggling with, and and I mentioned it. It's like I struggle with depression quite a bit, um, depression and anxiety, and and it's just it's just. Part, become a part of my life um, that I'm working through but uh, you know the, having those little victories that you don't see it's like you could you could throw you know depression and a lot of anxiety stuff in there and even beat yourself up even more because oh well I haven't I'm not not writing anything or I'm, I've never published anything and it's such a big monumental task instead of going hey I wrote my 350 word goal this month or today. Um, you know, I've wrote, I've written. Maybe your goal is a thousand words. Um, I know we had one guy as part of Nano. He did uh, 30. What was it 31 story starts? Yep. Um, another guy. Really, a new chapter one every day. Another guy. Uh, what was it last two year, two or three years ago? Like one of my first years that I did it, um, he wrote a short story every day. So it was about a two thousand word short story. Um, I don't know if any of them were connected. I never read any of them. I just know that it happened. Um, there was one year that I did a, uh, I did a, a board game, uh, RPG. For, for Nano, um, and it was just to challenge myself to write every day. So you definitely want to definitely want to have that encouragement and that those little those little uh, successes. Uh, yeah, my friend Anthony, he wrote, he, I uh, 
five days in to us doing NaNoWriMo, he actually joined in because uh, I, I told him all about it. And he's like, holy crap, that's what he's always needed, just like I've always needed. And a lot of people always need is the, just that kick, mm-hmm. you know. And NaNoWriMo is a great kick. So he uh, wrote the book and he uh, edited it himself, sent out to beta readers, and actually he's just published it a couple weeks ago. So makes me a slacker. That's what it does. Because I, I finished a book at the same time he did, and his is out, where mine's uh, hasn't even been edited once. I haven't looked at it since I wrote it. Yeah, but you've got to you've got to be able to relax on some of those some of those uh, uh, editing goals and stuff like that because. I mean, it, it yeah. takes time to, to do stuff like that. And the the thing that I've seen with some uh, writers, and I could be wrong, both Ben, like we've mentioned, Ben and I are not professional writers by any means. Really, the only one that of us that is remotely professional would be Matt. Um, the problem that I've that I've read about is is you'll snowball. Sometimes, if you get something good and it gets published. Then you have those fans that are that are just sitting there waiting for your next stuff, and then the fans kind of taper off because, well, you don't produce something the next, you know, s- six months. That's that's you know for them to read. Then you can uh, you start losing which, that fan base, which I find dumb. I mean, I've again I've read it, I've read a lot of books. Um, mostly I listen to a lot of audio books, but. Um, I never get uninterested. It just all it makes me do is I have to go back and re-listen or re-read something, and then come when the new thing comes. I mean, yeah, maybe people don't want to re-read, but I mean Dresden. Okay, that's that's a classic one. Hasn't came out with a book in a couple years. I mean, he just maybe started writing it. Just he was he told everyone he was writing it in January of last year. And then several months later, when October came around, he's like, okay, I'm about to go start it. And everyone's like, wait, didn't he already start it? Um, But again, he's published other things. He just hasn't published Dresden, which everyone's waiting on. Uh, Look at J. Arl, no. Who writes Game of Thrones? Or Sword and Fire, whatever it is? Uh, Martin. Yeah. He has, they've all been, he hasn't published in so long that the, the uh, TV show actually has caught up yep. to him and surpassed him. Well, We're going to know how the books end before they end. They knew yeah. it would. Uh, the TV the pe- series, unfortunately, it also has, uh, the TV series from what, I, from what I've read, also runs into the flaw that... Uh, they, you know, you have actors that can't stick around for the entire project. Uh, some actors pass away, or you know, little things happen, so they have to adjust the plot accordingly. Um, and so things change. But they knew they'd get to a point where they would beat the uh, the novels that are out there. And yeah. I think it's it's been factored in a lot. But I mean, Martin could come in. And take a look at what they did for the uh, the you know they, he could see what they did for the show and be like nope that's not how it's going to end and completely rewrite it. Um, well, he he already has given them, they are the only other people besides him who knows the ending, yep. like the actual ending of everything, because uh, he wrote that years ago. Maybe Ben Weiss becomes the, the Iron King. The king on the Iron Throne. So, I mean, the thing is, is, is yes, you're going to lose fans if you're not constantly releasing. But then you'll have a lot of fans that are just kind of uh, adamant about staying. Yep. So, I think you'll, how always it- have, you'll always have those fans, um, especially if you can get the, the, you know, the loyal fans. Um, we've got a couple of them for the show. We don't have a lot of regular viewers yet. We're still building that audience, but we've got at least two 
uh, people that tune in pretty regularly. And, uh, you know, Lunar tweets out everything that we tweet. It's, it's pretty awesome that, you know, she retweets stuff. And we've got a group of fans on our Twitter site, which is uh, at WordArtOnline, the number one, uh, on Twitter, who will retweet stuff that we put, that we put out there. Um, you know, there's different, uh, there, there's different types of fans. Um, you know, my mom, my family, they don't really understand the whole podcasting thing. Um, and in some cases they don't really get why I, I enjoy it so much because let's face it, it took for test reactor when we had that podcast going, we, yeah, we had it funded for a year in what was it three months but three i think we only had three episodes or maybe it was three months of episodes i don't know man it was pretty it was it was a three something it was really a fluke i mean to be honest what it was it yeah it was entirely because i i started having a a very uh well-known in the qa part uh what is it called blog QA hipster. yeah and it, it was going pretty well and uh and so i did that for a long time then I, I decided to just randomly i posted a podcast under qa hipster under soundcloud and he found that and i was like what what i what and so i told him about test reactor and we got paid for 10 months it's pretty cool yeah. um and all we had to do was three months of work yeah, but the thing is, is like we didn't we didn't make any money off that. Um, we spent a lot of time and effort in you know making those episodes and recording those episodes. But you know we were just having fun. It would have been nice if it if it would have uh, paid paid us something. But uh, in the end, if we would have if we would have cut after we were done with. Uh... If we would have cut after we were done with the ads, we could have just totally just took the money and rain. Yeah. But I mean the the you know if you look at you look at the Wowcast stuff, um, you know it's we're up to episode forty four. Uh, November comes around shortly before November is when uh, Matt and I started this. You know, and I'm just doing this for fun. You know and. Yeah, that's how you're supposed to podcast. That's the main reason to podcast is for fun. I'd love to have uh, our our uh, start generating some income or start generating some at least be able to make it sustain itself. All we need to do is get a thousand views per episode on YouTube, and then we can uh, if we get a thousand views per episode on YouTube, we can get Audible as a sponsor. Yep. And it'll work really well because, again, it's books, writing books, they go together. Yeah, and that's, I mean, and that goes along with having those, those thousand fans. Uh, yeah. A thousand people watching every time. Yeah. Or one person watching a thousand times, Lunar. I mean, what? <laughs> she is busy. <laughs> She should be busy watching our show over and over and over and over now. So, but uh, yeah. So today's episode is brought to you by the word uh, "rampike." Uh, it's chiefly Canadian. It's uh, defined as a dead tree. Especially the blue skeleton or splintered trunk of a tree killed by fire, lightning, or wind. Uh, it entered English uh, English usage in the late 1500s. Its origin, its true origin, is actually uncertain. Okay then. So uh, we don't have Matt to continue on in their story, so we should probably. I don't know if we're gonna are we gonna continue with the story. We're we gonna do something else. I don't My guess that. is we could talk about our project. So how are you doing on your project? What exactly have you done in the last two weeks for Camp Nano? Or, yes. Uh, okay. So uh, 
I have been working diligently on Elfwood as my primary primary uh, deal project. Um, I've been working on a diff couple of different areas from there, there, there and helping Scott and Ren out and the team. Uh, and I've been taking taking uh, input from them as far as what they need. I have also been um, knee deep in Escape from the Con, which is a RPG setting that uh, I'm working on, where you uh, the the players escape from a, uh, a gaming convention when the world kind of starts collapsing. So. It's it's a pretty exciting exciting time. Um, I mean, cool. I'm I'm excited to see what happens with this. I have been working on a few other uh, uh, one other project that I'd rather not talk about right now. Um, but uh, mostly we need to know about escaping from the con. Yep. And we were even talked about that. What was it earlier today? And Joe's, it's kind of kind of first come out as a core book, if I'm right. And we're thinking, you're thinking of maybe card gaming parts of it. What's that? Are you still, are you still thinking of card gaming parts? Yes. So um, yours now. The the base idea uh, I have for it is going to be a, a role playing system without the GM. Uh, it will use the success system, which is a D6 system to make it as simple as possible and it's very storyteller driven however um, I do understand that there are a lot of other systems out there that that would benefit from having a GM less system meaning that the system can play by itself without the GM running the story uh, I chose to use the success system because I like the narrative driven stories and narrative driven games I'm hoping that uh, the players will be able to read the cards and provide their own little narr narrative to what's going on and kind of dive into the imagination of uh, the game system. Um, I will include an RPG, like an actual traditional uh, paper copy of the adventure in either in the card game itself or as a buy, an add-on either through probably through drive through RPG um, where people can buy either the card game version or the paper paper version and then if you have somebody that that's familiar and running being a GM a game master then uh, you can take this uh, this game setting and run with it just have fun with it um, it's going it can be uh, one of the elements that I've had issues with is writing it and the encounters so that way it can be system agnostic. Uh, that is, the system shouldn't matter to keep you from playing the game. You could play this in a D20 system, a D10 system uh, like Exalted, or a D6 system like Success. Uh, the idea is, is to tell, tell the story and not be limited by rules. Word. Art online. So that's very cool, man. I'm I'm looking forward to it being done and I'm actually running uh this Friday at Constellation Nebraska, shameless plug. Um we are Ben and I are going to are going to tackle a RPG adventure improv where uh players are going to be able to to interact with Escape from the Con and with the uh the player's inputs or the the audience's input. So very cool. It's it's pretty exciting. It's going to be I think my panel's from 9 to 11. Hey, hey, ben, you have a panel before oh, mine. Man. Why don't you uh, you talk about that for a second while I go and deal with a 6-year-old. Well, yeah, you were cutting out there. Uh, Joe again cut out if he was asked about my panel. Uh, let's see, my panel that I'm going to do right before his is Podcasting 101 for those who want to learn how to podcast. The podca the uh, Underground Inc. will be there. And they will be there under the umbrella, in a way, of the Podcast Arcade, 
we will be doing a couple panels. We have our own table. We'll be uh, in the foyer. We'll have cards and we'll have flyers to give out. We will be podcasting there on whenever we can. We have two panels. One is on one is the podcast one on one right before Joe's podcast panel, and then we have another one on Sunday called uh, From Comics to Cinema, where we talk about the differences between all the different. Uh, we we go and we talk about how comics have come to the cinema, and cinemas come back to comics, and how they interact with each other, what has kind of changed them, what uh, besides that. Where's the differences, like in how Wally or how in uh, Flash, he mostly fights Wally's villains, and he doesn't fight really his own villains a lot. He's mostly fighting Wally's villains all the time. It's kind of sad, uh, and stuff like that. So we're gonna continue on with just kind of comparing and contrasting. We did this panel last year. It was a lot of fun. We got a lot of audience uh, feedback. I did it with Joe last year because my friend Billy could not make it, uh, but Joe was pretty good at helping me with Con- uh, Constantine and whatnot. Uh, there is no longer a show of Constantine, which is sad. So, uh, yeah, if you are going to Constellation, Nebraska, definitely stop by the Underground Ink table. We'll uh, be there or somewhere. Are you back, Joe? Yep, I'm back. Speaking of okay. Constantine, I have it on DVD. Nice, nice. So, very nice. Yep. So, uh, yeah, Constell- Constellation Nebraska is going on. This weekend is busy for events. Uh, Ryan, it one of the guys, the, one of the yep. guys that runs uh, Constellation, mentioned. Uh, or I mentioned to him that he's got PretzCon going on, which ha- is happening. We've got International Tabletop Game Day going on. Uh, Planet Comic Con in Kansas City. Yep, Planet Comic Con in Kansas City. Um, the Nebraska Renaissance Fair is going on in Omaha. Um, uh, that's where Matt is going to be. That's where part part of his, his part of him is going to be. Um, but yeah, it's it's a busy weekend in the in the Midwest. So, for those of you out there who are watching us on the coast and think that all we got going on out here is cows and stuff, um, you're right. Um, we do have we do have quite a few good good things going on. I will say I've been I lived on the East Coast for three weeks, with months and not weeks. And uh, for those who actually do live on the East Coast, if you do listen, your fish might be amazing, but your meat sucks. You come here, your fish will suck, and your meat will be amazing. Uh, unless we, sure you get fresh what, fish from... I'm pretty sure that's a setup for a, that's what she said. But. <laughs> you want the meat? Give it. Well, the other good thing is there was a comedian who was talking about how uh, he uh, was in the Midwest, and he says, those, uh, those people are huge... And he goes, if anyone calls you the N-word, you just say, yes, sir. And I was like, what? Because he was just talking about how everyone here is just so big. Interesting. Uh, it was a very funny thing. I mean, it's nothing I can pull off because I'm too white. And I'm wanna, too big. I want to try something. And normally, whenever we have all three of us, we go till 10 o'clock. Right? Yes. And because Matt's not here, we don't really have a lot going on in the collaboration story. Just cut it now. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards. I want to see if we get any any more views on YouTube by having a shorter show. I say um, we go four more minutes. Yeah, go till forty. Yeah. Um, Mike, super short show. But like I said, folks, we do we do this every week nine nine p.m. to uh, usually till ten. Um, this week it's just been kind of hectic for both of us, for all of us, and and as we said, we've got prep we've got to do for this weekend. So. Um, yep, yep, yep. But uh, you can find out more information about Wowcast uh, <laughs> about Word Art online at our website, which is 
hang on just a second, let me switch windows, which is directly above Ben is wowcast.com, and slight over to the other side is our twi Twitter handle, that's at wordartonline, the number one. And actually, if you go to Wowcast, you can find our Twitter there. If you are on Twitch and you click the info tab and scroll down, you can find the Twitter link there as well. Yep. And, uh, yep, we'll have the, this episode will be uploaded very shortly. Uh, we want to wish everybody a very good luck on finishing up their, uh, Camp Nano stuff, because that ends the, uh, what is it, Sunday? Yep, Sunday is the 30th, so... Um, yep. Looks like I'm going to fail. Yeah. Woo! I wouldn't call it a failure. I could just call it a learning experience. I know um, how to succeed at Camp NaNoWriMo, though. You just change your goal last minute. True. <laughs> but then you gotta you got to verify, and that's where I'm running into issues. I'd love to verify, but uh, my stuff's all across, like, like I said, three different projects. Well, see, that's why I uh, the I write using Ulysses, but uh, what I can do since if if it's different projects, is I add new chapters that are specifically the other project. Hmm. Kind of combine them that way. Yeah. Or what you can do is take your two separate projects, combine, just copy paste them all into one document, then copy paste that whole thing into another, <laughs> into the word count. Do you actually have to verify in camp? I didn't think you did. It popped up for verify just a couple days ago. Oh. But I, oh, validate project. There it is. Yep, yeah, validate project. Paste your writing project. Uh, we, I want to jump in with this discussion because I think this is kind of cool. Uh, Jeff Goldblum has joined Jurassic World sequel. Really? According to uh, AMC Theaters, so... It's the Hollywood Reporter was the original, but uh, a couple people have retweeted it, so. It'll be directed by J.A. Bayona. Never, I don't know if I've heard of that, that director. Yeah, I have no idea either. Well, maybe he's just coming back to acting, and that's why. Because uh, he hasn't done anything in a long time, and all of a sudden he's doing Guardians. He's it's gonna just be like seen in, in Disney and Marvel's Thor Ragnarok. Yep. Um, uh, that was it, Thor Ragnarok, not Guardian. Sorry. Uh, and uh, also, besides that, he's also like he, a lot of people are coming back into acting who haven't acted in a while. Look at uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, but that's because he was governor for a while. Uh, Kurt Russell's coming back. You got Jeff Goldblum coming back. Yeah. So. It's kind of cool. You got Sylvester Stallone coming back in, but he's been coming back for a while. He might have been the one who started it all. I'm kind of eager to see what what they do with it. Um, I just hope they don't do the whole "Oh, it's the dinosaurs are escaping to the city." Oh my! But you know, because that's that's kind of been been done a lot. Yeah, I liked uh, Lost World was the dinosaur escaped to the city. It's like if they, okay, well, if they actually sure. brought it back, brought it back to the original island. But I don't gotcha. know. We but should yeah. wrap it up. All right, folks. Uh, for more information about Wow, the Word Art Online podcast or uh, hangout, go to wowcast dot com. Show notes will be in our pants bar on. Uh, some point so from all of us at the the word art online studios we wish you a fond good night <laughs>